So next up, we wanted to give you some examples of businesses effective. And Mark has pulled a few examples. Uh, this is just a, the, the early days of businesses being affected. Uh, for those of you joining with us, if your business has had any run-ins with AI hallucination, uh, let us know in the chat. Uh, over to you, Mark. Yeah. The, and at this point, the, the number of incidents that we're used to say on, on social media is, is much, um, uh, much lower than than uh, 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 than what we're seeing at you know out in the in the in the big bad web world, um, but some of the things that we're we've all followed over the past few years about uh, misinformation trickling out into the into social media and such uh, gives you a sense of what could happen and and so like this is a um, story about a restaurant in Fresno. Uh, that had to close really precipitously, a popular restaurant in the community that became the subject of terrible, terrible rumors. And uh, um, and within days, uh, this once popular Laotian and Thai restaurant closed down uh, because uh, one person had taken a photo of a dog in a yard that was next to the restaurant and the manipulation which was you know not a high tech manipulation it was it was quite literally picture of dog and picture of um of the restaurant that created this uh um tsunami of misinformation that that uh that closed a, a you know a, what had been a popular restaurant and uh it was it was upsetting for the family that owned it um, as you can probably tell from the the quote here, and um, and on the next slide, um, he you know he says more about the the kind of content you know communications he got. It's very easy to imagine how the problems that we've seen in recent years about the spread of misinformation on social media can be amplified by uh, these AI tools that will. Um, it, you know, in some cases, probably by accident, uh, connecting dots that didn't need to be connected, um, and in other cases, by amplifying information that other people are sharing and saying uh, that this is um, uh, that that help get spread by this kind of technology. So, uh, all of these kind of um, horrible situations that we've seen. Are, are are a good way of imagining what could come next for particularly for people in small businesses whose reputations are uh, their gold standard. And uh, it's going to be a, a real problem for those folks. Um, if we go uh, a step forward on this, um, Dan, if you... Uh, um, there, it's also worth thinking about lessons we've learned in recent years about how to respond to these kind of situations. So, for example, in Cleveland, Ohio, um, in the early days of the pandemic in, in, um, in May of 2020, a um, uh, similar sort of situation where there was a lot of um, misinformation about Asian restaurants in a, a very popular neighborhood in, in Cleveland. They were being singled out for uh, um, um, threats and uh, they were losing business very precipitously. The county health board in Cuyahoga County, uh, uh, Ohio, actually went out and made flyers for the restaurants to put in their windows as kind of like a, a, a statement of it, this is a safe place to go. These are, you know, and, and and I don't know if you can read the language on here, but um, it talks about, um, uh, you know, that going to Asian restaurants or meeting with Asian people is risky to their health. This is false and unfairly disrespects Asian Americans. And so this was a, a government response sparked by the community and uh these are the kind of things we'll have to be on the lookout for, but it, there are also ways that we can try to fight back on the spread of this kind of misinformation. And again, 
good proxy for what's uh, what could happen in the world of hallucinations. So I uh, want to invite you guys to share if there are any examples of hallucination that you've had. Um, I had an interesting one come up for BizHack. I'm in the process of putting together a book proposal. And one of the elements you need in a book proposal is a list of comparative titles or books that are similar to yours. And this is a pain in the butt. It's a lot of research. It takes a lot of work. Um, it, it's an Im imperfect science. So I asked generative AI, hey, can you give me some a list of comparative tit comparative titles to my proposed book? And it came up with this incredible list. And two of the books on there were um, real and the other three were made up. Uh, but what was interesting is when I went to the catalog of those authors, they had written actual books that were similar to mine, but the title that was presented in generative AI was not actually the title of the book. And so it wasn't completely uh, useless. Uh, it was a uh, sort of a lead into the actual information that I eventually used. And it did introduce me to a few authors that I wasn't aware of, but it was... Um, uh, uh, interesting that it made stuff up like that. And it was so, you know, compelling and, and, and convincing. And if we hadn't done some of the fact checking behind it, uh, we would have actually gone with it and that would have been disastrous. Uh, it would have been very hard for, for an author, uh, to, um, I'm sorry to, for a publisher to take us if we have, uh, kind of invented, uh, books in our book profile, in our comparative titles, and they will be able to figure that out. Um, what about you, uh, uh, Mark? Have you ever encountered uh, a, um, a, you know, hallucination in your business? Uh, well, ironically, yes. In the fact-checking world, we, um, as, as this technology was emerging, we did an experiment and asked ChatGPT to make a 14 week syllabus for our classes that focus on fact checking. And um, when it uh, produced this for us, we took a look at it and we're like, wow, this is, this is actually pretty impressive. And it had good, the, the right themes and a good progression of order. And it was, it was, it was very impressive. And it even had this list of books that um, we could use in the courses uh, which was also great. And some of them were ones that we hadn't even heard of, which is unusual for us since we try to gobble up all this information. And uh, it then became really clear uh, that several of those books that it had suggested for us were uh, much like the, your experience, Dan, just made up. They, they, were, um, they, they were good titles for books that had not actually been written yet and uh, or, or ever perhaps. So, um, that was a eye-opening experience as we started thinking about, well, what does this all mean for the fact-checking business? Anna Marie, any examples from your side? Yes, uh, I had <laughs> something that funny that happened to me. I was I downloaded the automatic transcription from my YouTube video, and I asked ChatGPT to clean the transcription in order to have because uh, YouTube. Uh, segment every five seconds which is very annoying in order to to read the a whole text so i asked chatgpt to put together all the sentences to split paragraph and and add punctuation so when i was checking the <laughs> the chatgpt version with mine i realized that some sentences were completed with additional information and i say where is this this is not so i heard the uh, the original video, I I was listening to the video. This is not here. So I was like double checking, double checking. And I was, where is this? So I asked ChatGPT, where did you get this? And it told me, oh, I'm sorry. I thought that it makes sense. <laughs> so it was very, I mean, it apologized, but actually added information to my original content. So Perfect. Um, one other quick thing I wanted to share is uh, there was a great question in the Q&A uh, from uh, Janice, um, and she asked, how does AI hallucination affect the workplace? I think that's a, a great answer, a great question. Um, and so, you know, one of the ways in which AI can affect the workplace is it can, um, you know, perpetuate 
um, you know, stereotypes. It can um, cause I information that's inaccurate um, to be spread about colleagues. And so, um, you know, when it comes to recruiting, and I know, Mark, uh, recruiting, it, there, there's a lot of challenges with bias in AI. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, AI is being used to, like, filter resumes, um, and so uh, facial recognition is very biased against people with dark colored skin. So there's a lot of ways in which, um, you know, AI is perpetuating uh, in the business world outside of just marketing and sales, which is the focus of, of today's conversation. So um, when I uh, there's also been at least one lawsuit um, about um, AI filtration that uh, affected uh, hiring practices. And uh, so we'll have to follow that and see what happens happens there. But this was a, a really good example of the of the potential risk. 